Hello everybody, my name is Clay with Photos by Clay and Alley. And today what I want to do is show you how to take this rather mundane, ugly looking photo and change it into something that's a little more exciting. Now this was a uh, photograph of the uh, of a windmill up at that windmill farm on I-65 in the northern part of Indiana. It was a rather dreary day and we snapped this photo because it was the just one big windmill that was close to us and all the others were in the you know shrunk down really small in the background but unfortunately with the weather the way it was the sky was horrible I mean, it just this was ugly and it looks almost black and white even though it's a, a full color photo so what i want to do is show you how in the next 15 to 20 minutes that you can take something like that and convert it into this and which do you think looks bet most uh, eye appealing this one or this one, and I think it's this one. It's not realistic in terms of the colors and whatnot, but it looks nice. And if you're interested in windmills and these windmill uh, turbines, then this is kind of a cool photo. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And so what we're going to do is we've got a copy of it over here with just the original starting layer in it. And so what I've, I'm going to do at first is just make some copies of this. So one way I'm going to do it is drag this down and, and, and do this new layer icon down here at the bottom of the palette over here. And it makes it, it calls it background copy. That's why I did it that way. And because I, that way it says background copy. But for the next copy I'm going to make, I'm just going to hit Control J. And actually this time it figures. It made it call it copy two. But what we're going to do is we're going to rename this call, uh, without the windmill. W slash O windmill. And so we're going to get rid of this windmill. In this particular layer. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blow this thing up so that you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to come up here and we're going to do this upper vein first. And I'm going to use a tool that Photoshop calls the quick selection tool. And I'll go back and forth sometimes by, by just clicking the icon or by clicking the shortcut keys. And you'll see there's a plus sign in there, which means that if there were a selection there, I'm just going to add to it. Right now we're starting from scratch. So I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. And I'm going to come right into here and as best as I can stay in between these lines and drag down like this. And when I get down a certain distance, I'll just let it go and let it snap to itself into position and make sure that it got everything the way I like. And looking at this, it did a pretty good job there. So I'm going to scroll down here a little further and get the rest of this thing going back and forth a little bit. And we'll get down to here and we'll let it go. Yeah, right about to here and we'll let it go and bingo it snapped in pretty good now you'll notice there's a little spot here in, in here if you could see it that it really really shouldn't be selected in here but it doesn't really matter this is such a small part of that image it's not going to show anyway so then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here so you can see it and I'm going to select the rest of this turbine box like this And, ooh, that looks pretty good. So I'm not going to mess with it. And then I'm going to come over here and get the rest of this one. And so I'm going to go to get this guy right here like this and go boom like this and let go. And that one did a really good job of snapping all the way that whole entire um, uh, vein of, of, of the windmill. So I'm going to come over here to this side. And I've done this a couple times, so I know this side's not quite as cooperative. And I'm going to come down here like this and kind of come up here like this a little bit and let it snap into place it did a pretty good job there and we're going to come down like this let it snap again and missed a little spot right here so I'm going to try to get it and it did, it did a pretty good job there and I'm going to come down here some more and go all the way down to the tip and boom let it snap and it did miss this section here so what I'm going to do is convert over to a different tool and it's the, the polygonal lasso tool. And if it says plus on it, like it does there, it's going to add to the selection. If I hold the Alt key down, it changes it to minus if I want to get rid of something. So we're going to leave it on plus. And I'm just going to highlight this, bring this down like this. You may not even be able to see this in the video that you're looking at, but um, I can see it and it bugs me. So I'm going to make sure I get it. Now we got to do the base. And so I'm going to again change over to the quick selection tool. And I'm on the plus sign. That's what I want. I'm going to come down like this, just trying to stay kind of towards the middle. And it did a really good job 
And you might say, if I go back over here, there's a section here that should be added back in there. I can't see my mouse cursor. And why is that? There we go. Right in here, it missed. So I'm going to fill that in like that. It's pretty good. Then I'll come down to here, go back to the quick selection tool by hitting W and coming down here like this. Actually, I'm going to make my, my cursor a little bigger. might make it a little easier. There we go. Go like this. And boom, it snapped right in. Come down again. Boom, it snapped right in with everything except over here. It got this big area here. Now I can hold the Alt key down and go down like this and get rid of some of it. But I find in this instance, it's easier just to use that, that lasso tool, hold the Alt key down to make it a negative. So it's going to subtract. I'll come down to here like this and subtract all this out. Like that. Boom. Now I've got a pretty darn near perfect selection. Eh, if you're real picky like me, you might go ahead and fill this in, but you really wouldn't have to. I don't think you'd see it in the image at all. So we're going to hit Control 0 and go back to full scale. And there we have a selection. So now before we do anything else, before we lose it, let's save it. So we're going to say edit, or a, excuse me, select menu, option, save, save selection. And we'll call this windmill. Didn't spell it right, but who cares? Um, and we've got our selection saved for, for use later. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a really cool feature that we're going to make this thing disappear. In order to be able to do that, I want to expand this selection. So it shows, it shows a little bit of the sky on each side of it. So what I'm going to do is go into the select menu again. This time I'm going to select the modify uh, option and come down here and say expand. And I'm going to expand it by 13 pixels. I'll say 15 just so you can see me change something. And boom. And you can see now that 15 pixels on each side of that vein all the way around the windmill are being selected. Now to use this magical thing called content aware, we just have to right click inside those uh, marching ants and we'll say fill and we're going to make sure we choose content aware, which uh, aware, which I already have because I use it all the time. And what content aware is going to do is going to fill in from one side of those marching ants to the other, everything in between, and it's going to use the information on the outsides to do that to make this gradual transition and most of the time it works without doing anything else but sometimes you gotta get funky with it and so we click OK and it'll take a few seconds on my slow computer for uh, Photoshop to do its thing and when it's done boom if I get rid of those marching ants by hitting control D you can't even see that there was any, anything there I love this this tool I use it all the time so here is the image, only it's missing that big windmill. So now what we're going to do is we're going to color this image to make it look cool, and then we'll put the uh, windmill back in later. Now, I'm going to use what's called a solid fill, and we're basically going to put a layer on there that's going to be a solid color. And the first then one that we're going to do is going to be the sky. So I'm going to select this solar, uh, solid color um, uh, fill layer and I've already selected it once so there's the color I'm going to use you can select whatever color you want but I'm using a, blark, a dark blue here and I'm going to hit OK and there we have this solid color on top of everything unfortunately it's just like putting a piece of blue construction paper on top of a photograph you can't see anything through it but unlike that piece of construction paper Photoshop has all kinds of ways you can cause that layer to blend in and meld with the layers underneath of it. And one of those is called the hard mix. Hard mix is one of those adjustment layers. There's, there's seven or eight special adjustment layers in Photoshop where the opacity, which is just the, the clearness of the layer, that option where you can change that, works differently than the fill. And so we're going to use this fill option and we're going to start out by setting it at about 35%. We may want to modify that in a minute. But there it is. Now, you might notice there's a problem. It's not just affecting the sky. It's also affecting the foreground or the, 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 what little bit of green there is there in, in the parking lot. And so that's not good. So what we have to do is we have to modify this so that this effect only shows on the upper half of the image. 
And so we're going to use this thing over here called um, a layer mask in order to do that. And something that's white means that whatever is on that layer shows through. If this thing is black, like for example, if I invert it, now nothing, none of that color shows through. So what we want to do is we want to create a gradient where everything on top shows through, everything on the bottom is blocked, or, or that, that layer mask is black, and then there's a gradual uh, change in between. And there's a tool for that called the gradient tool. And so we're going to choose the gradient tool, and we want to choose it, and we're going to make it go from white to black. And so if I start right about in this area here, everything above that point is going to be white, which means that the blue will show through into the picture. Everything down below, say about here, is going to be black, and then there will be a gradual transition uh, in between. And actually, I might want to stop it over here because I really don't want that effect into the grass either. So what we're going to do is start right about here, if you can see where I'm at, right about there. And I'm going to say, oh, let's go down a little bit lower. We're going to go right about to here, to here. That's all that we need right there. Boom. Now we've got it. Notice that we've got some of the, uh, uh, that, that coloring in the green showing through as well. Nothing's showing in the parking lot, but everything in the sky is pretty much the color we want. And after having looked at that, I think I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to increase the fill of that uh, layer. And probably right about in there is pretty good. Now, we got to do the same thing for this parking lot to make it uh, more of a brownish color. Actually, this is a mud lot. There's not much pavement on it and a little bit of gravel. So what we're going to do is do that effect again. We're going to say, okay, let's go uh, to our adjustment layer, choose a solid color once again. But this time, let's choose a brown. So we'll come down here and we'll choose some kind of a dark brown, maybe something like that. And we'll hit OK. And we'll do the same thing. We're going to go into here. We're going to say uh, hard mix. And we're going to set this to start with at about 35%. And I know that because I did it before. But, you know, it, you know, originally I think I set it like this. I like I liked the 35 better. So I'm going to go back and just once again select, set that exact 35% uh, percent fill. And again, though, we've got the same problem. It's affecting the sky. We don't want it to. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to use that gradient tool, but we're going to go the opposite way. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the gradient tool. We've already got that chosen. We're going to go from white. We're going to start the white right about here because we want everything below this to show. But up here, we don't want it to show at all. So I'm going to start. Uh, well, let me choose my layer mask so that it will work. And I'm going to start right about here. So we want all the effect to show through there. But we don't want any of it to show through about here. So boom. So we've got the effect showing through here. And we've got uh, the, on the blue, we've got the blue only on the top. We've got the brown on the bottom. Now there's one problem here with this one. And that is that the grass is, uh, is actually being affected by that dark brown. And we don't want that. So the easiest way to get rid of that is we'll take the paintbrush tool this guy right here and make sure the opacity and everything is okay we're going to shrink this down a little bit now there's a cool thing with Photoshop if you hold the alt key and right click you can change the size of your brush and also change how dense it is and so we're going to choose a medium density probably about this this size right here to start with and we're just going to paint through on that and one of the cool shortcuts that Photoshop has that's handy um, and by the way we want to change back over to black so that so we can paint on it and get the effect. But Photoshop has this cool thing. If I just click right here, like this, and then hold the shift key, it'll kind of follow that, that effect. And if you don't like what it is, you can go back in and touch something up later. But I'm just doing this for, for speed. I don't want to take all day uh, doing this. And so I'll just fill in here by hand. Same thing over here. And over here, and over here like this over here like this and uh, again uh, maybe we'll brush a little bit larger come over here like this come over here like this come over here like this and we'll just get rid of that brown that makes that thing look completely dark over here like this 
like this. That's pretty good. Over here like this. Over here like this. We don't care about that little dinky part of the row back here. You can't see it that much anyway at full view. And we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure that we paint over this as well because there is a little bit of texture in there that we want to show through in the image. So we'll kind of go like that. And over here in these trees, we'll kind of grab those and do that. And maybe kind of like this, and kind of like this. And we're almost done here. Boom. So now we've got our images. And you know, as I look at that, I'm, I, I must have hit something. So I'm going to go back to the to the uh, uh, white, white layer here so I can show through and catch the edge here a little bit. There we go. All right, so now um, if we wanted to, we could even touch this up over here, a little bit like that, and control zero, boom, there we've got our finer color. Now what we got to do is put the windmill on top. So we're going to go back to our original layer down here. I'm just going to get rid of everything else so you can see it. And we're going to say load that selection we saved a while ago. So we're going to say load, and we only have one selection, which is the windmill. So we'll just choose that. And you can see now the marching ants uh, on the windmill. Now, if I go ahead and put all these back in here, then um, you still won't see it. So what we're going to do is go back to that first layer here. And we're going to make a layer that's a copy uh, but it's only going to have the windmill in it because there's a selection there. And you want, if you have a selection, you want to make a separate layer just out of that selection, you can do that by hitting Control-J. And now we've got a selection. If we look at it, that, it's just, that layer is nothing but the windmill. So we're going to drag him all the way up here to the top and uh, then turn everything else back on. And so there we've got our basic image. Now, what I did before in the other image is I wanted to increase the contrast in, 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 in both the dirt and in the, uh, the, the uh, sky a little separate from it. So I'm going to put a, right above that, that, that blank layer, I want to put a, um, a, a curve adjustment layer. And we'll, we'll do the, uh, we'll do the uh, sky first. Now the problem is, is if I do this, boink, it changes everything. We don't want to do that. So what we're going to do, since we want it to only show in the sky, we're going to borrow this mask from uh, the blue layer, and we're going to bring it down here like this. Now whatever I do to this is only going to affect the, uh, the sky. And so if I go like this, and maybe I want to increase the contrast a little bit. I think I do. Do like this, and then bring this back down like this. We'll in increase that contrast. That has a lot of drama to it. I like that um, a lot better than what I had before. I mean, when I take this down just a little bit like this. And you could play around here if you want to, but for this, I don't need to do that. And notice that it's only, it's not affecting the uh, the parking lot and the grass. It's only affecting the sky because we took this mask, which was blocking out um, all the, down, the, the stuff down below and leaving only the sky to show. Now we want to do the same thing for the, for the, uh, for the ground so let's add another thing here let's take this mask up here for that we use for the color to make it only show through in the, the of the, in the brown and we'll bring it down to here like this and now again we can change the contrast by just bringing this over here like this and maybe bringing it down a little bit over here like this I like that right about there and if you think you did too much you can always go up to the opacity and lower the effect, but uh, we don't want to do that. We want to leave it right about there, and that is it. We've now got an image that's very similar to what I showed you at the beginning. And if I shrink this down one unit, it'll be more apparent. It's almost the same. I actually like this version better, but, you know, like I said, I've done it three or four times learning how to use this video software, so I should get it better the second time than I did the first. But this is cool. I think this looks so much better than this. And that's it for today. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to do it uh, below, and I'll try to answer them in any way possible. And in the meantime, have a good Sunday afternoon.